What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to be talking about the top 5 stocks and ETFs that I'm watching in the third week of December in 2018. So for all of you guys that are new viewers here, my name is Stas and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long term investing, and my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. So for those of you guys that want to learn more about that, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe, and follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter, and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. And if you guys want to be in contact with me and about 350 other investors and traders on a day-to-day -day basis, join our Discord group chat. I guarantee you guys will find value in there. It's a very helpful community. We're talking about trading, investing, stocks, news, strategies, and just networking and helping each other become the best possible traders and investors on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you guys want to be a part of it, again, all of the links are down below in the description box. And let's get started with today's video. So before I do talk about the couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade for this upcoming week, let's just briefly go over what happened this past week, in the past couple of trading days in the stock market, basically looking at the overall indexes, the Dow the S&P and the NASDAQ and I do this in every single video guys to get a broader perspective of what is going on in the overall stock market because this really dictates what I'm going to be trading am I going to be trading large cap stocks when the market is bouncing back up or am I going to be trading some market ETFs that go up in price when the markets are falling down or am I going to be trading some inverse ETFs so you know the understanding of the overall direction of the market is super, super important. So let's get into it right now, starting with the Dow Jones very quickly. For all you guys that have been paying attention to the markets this past week, you saw that we had a couple of green days in a row. We had a consolidation day. Then we had a very strong red day this past Friday. And the Dow Jones, guys, we dropped about 500 points, ended up closing the day at 2% uh, of a loss, right? And I made a video last week, I believe, or the previous week talking about how the Dow Jones broke below a very critical support level on this 184 hour chart, which was at about $24,500. And we can see that ever since it broke below that support, guys, that pretty much, you know, led it to continue this downwards trending pattern of making lower lows and making lower highs that it's been on over the past couple of months. And obviously, from the beginning of October, guys, we peaked out at about 27K, and from there, it's been a downwards fall in terms of the Dow Jones. And we can see it based off these trend lines here that it's trading in this channel of, again, lower lows and lower highs, meaning lower highs here, lower high from the previous high, lower high here from this previous high at about 26,200. And lower lows in terms of you know this low here at 24,500. We failed to make another low here, and this is why this support was very, very important. And once we broke below this support, that is where we made you know that lower low that pretty much uh continued this downwards trending pattern, this downwards trending channel of the Dow Jones. So, you know, what I'm looking for this week in terms of the Dow Jones, guys, is if we do have another couple of red days, let's say and we do get closer to this bottom part of this channel, I'm going to be waiting to see if we might have some bounce back days in terms of, you know, having a couple of green days in a row at the bottom of this channel, or maybe even right here at about 23,800, or maybe even 24,000 flat. So I wouldn't really be surprised if we potentially sold off again tomorrow, and then we had a couple of bounce back days, maybe back up to this 50 SMA, right, before we either continue to go down in price or we broke back above to head to the top resistance part of this channel which at that point would be around you know 25,000 maybe around like 25,200 like right around here if we were able to bounce here and push back up so you know right now guys my personal opinion we might have another red day another couple of red days before we do end up having a couple of more green days to push us back up towards the top of this channel but again keeping an eye on the markets and understanding 
understanding what is going on in the macro perspective is going to really help you understand and look into uh, you know other options in terms of stocks, ETFs, and what to really trade in more of the micro perspective. Because again, I gave this example in a couple of videos ago where you know the indexes are like the macro of the stock market, right? Like the macroeconomics of the United States is. Um, you know, the macro perspective and the micro is the small businesses made up of the United States, right? You can re you can really just use this example in the stock market as well, looking at the Dow, the NASDAQ, and the S&P as the macro, and then looking at the stocks that comprise those indexes as the micro. So really understanding the major, you know, the macro part of the stock market is going to help you understand what to trade in terms of the micro, which is, you know, the stocks. So, uh, you know, looking at the S&P 500 very quickly, we close the day at about 2% loss, minus $50 this past Friday. And very similar to the Dow, we had a couple of green days, a consolidation day, and then we finally broke below this support level this past Friday at about 26.30. And for those of you guys that have been paying attention to the markets, the past couple of weeks, you know, we've been trading in this horizontal pattern for the S&P with the resistance at about 2,800, right around 2,800 to 2,820, and a support at about 26.30. So the fact that we broke below this is a very key technical indicator that we might continue to fall down in terms of the S&P and potentially start the new year, you know, pretty, pretty much at around 26, you know, 25, $2,600, you know, in, in the next couple of weeks, right? So the fact that we broke below here, you know, that gives me a technical perspective, right? That we might continue to fall down in price. So the fact that we're pushing down here, not a very good sign for the overall S&P 500, but you know, let's take a little look at this one year chart very quickly to see an even broader perspective. So the fact that we broke below this support, which was a support <clears throat> a couple of months back, this was back in actually April. The next support we want to keep an eye on now is at about 2575 and this is a support from back in, what month is this now? This is early February 2018, so almost a year ago, and another support at about 2575 roughly the same range as this one, and this one was in the middle of March. So, you know, we're getting we're getting to those levels of, uh, you know, the, the lows of the levels that we saw in February and March. March of last year. So this is a very, very critical point. And the next resistance that you should all be keeping an eye on for the S&P. And it's a seriously very, very important, uh, you know, technical uh, area for the S&P 500. And now that we did that with the S&P, let's go back and do that with the Dow Jones very quickly. Let's take a look at what's going on here. So now we're pretty much hovering at, you know, from this one year chart, we're hovering at the support that we were at, you know, in the middle of June a couple of months back, which is right around, you know, $24,000. So if we break below $24,000, guys, again, not a very good technical indicator, but the next support at that point is going to be at around $23,800. So keep an eye on this chart, the one year, one day, because we're headed towards very key support levels in the Dow, in the S&P, and in the NASDAQ, which I'm going to show you guys right now. So very, very important. So, you know, again, NASDAQ, guys, we were down about 150 points, uh, I believe, at the close at Friday. We were down about 2.3%. I think the NASDAQ closed a little bit further below all the other indexes. But in terms of this one year, uh, what's this, one year, one day, I believe, right? Yeah, one year, one day chart. We're again at a very critical support for the NASDAQ as well, right? We're at a support right now at about 20 or not 20 at about $6,600 flat. We can see the support from a couple months back. Again, this was in the middle of uh, uh, what's this month 420 yeah, in the middle of about uh, April of 2018. We were at these levels and you know, the next support is going to be at around 6520, which again was a little bit before this previous support. Uh, uh, and this was more towards the uh, middle of April of 2018, right around here. So these are very important support levels. And then obviously the next one's going to be right around here 
at about $6,400. So keep an eye on these guys. You know, if we do have a couple of more red days, you know, these major indexes are going to be testing some serious support levels from a couple of months back, you know, mostly, you know, in the middle and in, into the middle and beginning of 2018. Those are the support levels that we're going to be testing next for the overall markets. Now, let's talk about a couple of stocks, top five stocks and ETFs that I'm watching for this upcoming week and really for the rest of December heading into 2019 this January. So the first one, I'm going to be talking about in this video deals with the natural gas uh, future, the natural gas commodity here, and that is D gas. So just today, I believe natural gas broke a serious support at about the uh, 50 SMA here on the one year, one day. And also on this 180, we plowed through that 180 SMA uh, a couple of days back. So now that the natural gas uh, future broke these critical levels, I'm going to be focusing my attention to DGAS because again, DGAS is an ETF that's going up in price when you know natural gas is selling off. So the fact that natural gas is looking like a falling knife right now, and you know we just got the price of what it is now because the futures markets open. I believe 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sundays, and we see that it's down another 17 cents, you know, this could lead into tomorrow's trading session and Tuesday's trading session if it continues to fall. And that's going to be a very key, uh, you know, reason why DGAS is going to be going up in price. So, you know, keep an eye on this 180 SMA on DGAS because that's a strong resistance over the past couple of months and we could see it here, right guys? So, you know, from about 75 or $78 that, that we closed at, there is some potential to go back up to maybe a $100 range if natural gas continues to fall. But, you know, since natural gas has fallen so much, we actually could potentially have a bounce back up, right, which would open up opportunities for you guys. So the whole idea here, guys, is to play it by ear and see what happens pre-market hours tomorrow and, you know, what the natural gas future is going to be doing. Because if we're looking at this on more of a technical basis, yeah, natural gas is a falling knife right now. Yeah, it's down about 18 cents since 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time when the futures uh, market opens. But we see here that it's actually extremely oversold on the RSI. And again, DGAS is extremely overbought on the RSI level. So, you know, we don't really base our decisions on one indicator, but the fact that we do see this, you know, this could be a warning sign or a sign, right, that natural gas could be pushing back up in price. It could have a potential pushback up maybe to 380, maybe to 390, maybe even back up to $4 before it does continue to fall up or, for, or, or fall down rather or continue to go back up in price. So, you know, we're going to be taking an eye on natural gas and degas very, very closely this week, especially since we've seen such a massive fall in terms of, uh, you know, natural gas. So that's the first one I'm watching. I'm really watching both of these guys d gas and u gas for the potential bounce back play on u gas or the continuation downtrend on natural gas which would make me trade d gas right so those are the first two that i'm watching that combo right there another one that i'm watching that's looking seriously amazing on a technical basis is uwt and dwt and uwt right now guys is looking very good on a technical basis. And we could take a look at this closer on the 20 day one minute or one hour, excuse me. We can draw out a very solid support here, right? And then a very solid resistance on UWT. Well, there's two resistances here. The first one's at about 1480, right? And the second one's at about 1580. And this one correlates with crude oil slash CL for those of you guys that don't know. And pretty much how this works, guys, is whenever crude oil is going up in price, UWT is going up in price and vice versa. Whenever crude oil is going down in price, DWT, which is the inverse to UWT, is going up in price. So if we take a look at crude oil, and I'm sure a bunch of you guys already know this, but for all you new viewers out there, maybe you don't know about this, crude oil has has gotten slaughtered over the past couple of months, right? We saw it peaked at 77 and it shot down all the way to $50, which is actually one of the biggest losses crude oil has seen in years, guys. So this sell-off 
was ridiculous, right? And we found a support at about $50, and that's very solid support over the past month or so at this point, right? We bounced, and we could see it closer here on the 20-day, right? We bounced at 50, and we held above there pretty much for like 10 different occasions, right? Here, 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 you know, we dipped a little bit below it there, but we came back up. We held it here, held it, held it, held it, held it, held it, and now we're actually holding it again, and remember the futures markets open at 60. 6 p.m. I believe 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and we see that it's actually trending up as we you know as we speak right now so the fact that we're holding above here we consolidated here and now we're pushing back up that gives me even further incentive to potentially trade UWT tomorrow because we do have margin here on CL to get up to at least 53, which has been the previous uh, resistance. And we do have another resistance here at about $52. But even if we move up to $52, guys, that's going to give us a solid 3, 4, 5% margin on UWT, uh, you know, if we do end up staying at these levels, obviously, you know, if we move up here, you know, pre-market hours and we, and we won't be able to catch that move, but let's say we do stand here and maybe break a little bit above here to 51.75, we might be able to catch that move up to the next resistance by the time the market opens. Or for those of you that trade pre-market hours, you could potentially catch the move as well. But you know, if you're trading pre-market hours, guys, liquidity is sometimes an issue. There's not that many, there's not as many people out there filling orders buying pre-market hours as there is you know during the market right this is something that a lot of people get you know messed up on if you're trading pre-market hours you know you can sell you can set an order at let's say a limit order and it doesn't get filled or something right or you you get filled at a different price than you then you put in your order right this happens because there's not as many buyers pre-market hours as there is you know during the market so just a little uh just a little heads up and little tip there for those of you guys that don't know about that but you know i'm going to be watching this one very closely because again we're testing this uh 50 sma right here resistance if we break out of that then break out of the 180 which is the next you know the uwt is is going to be a solid, solid play. And, uh, you know, DWT this past Friday had actually a 10% day on this drop from this resistance at about $52.50 down to the support at about $50. And that was able to push DWT, I believe it was like 10, 11, 12% this past Friday. So keeping an eye on you guys, D guys, you know, DWT and UWT very, very closely for this entire week and pretty much headed to you know the rest of this month because if we do break out of this resistance guys on crude oil at about $54 you know we can have a potential push back up into the $60 range maybe back up to the $70 range and that is a huge huge move for crude oil and UWT is going to be flying off the walls if that ends up happening because if we take a look at UWT very quickly before we talk about the next ETF and stock that I want to watch you know this ETF was once like a hundred not a hundred like fifty dollars right from fifty dollars it tanked almost like you know a fifth of its value now it's a fifth of what it used to be nearly you know a couple months back so you know we could potentially start to push back up and test you know the twenty dollar range thirty dollar range $40 range, maybe back up to $50. Who knows? But if crude oil breaks that $54 resistance, which could happen, that's a huge technical indication that we're going to be pushing up in price or we're at least going to start pushing up in price, right? So that is what I'm looking at in terms of these two ETFs, UWT and DWT. So another couple of ETFs that I'm watching for this upcoming week, and if you guys have been following me for a while, you're in the group chat, you know I talk about these all the time, and those are TQQQ and TVIX as well as SQQQ and these are market ETFs. I like to call them market ETFs. I'm sure they have a different name but you know these are the batches that I call or the batches of ETFs that I call market ETFs and you can see that here on my watch list and these are pretty much all the ones I'm watching. If you see here TVIX that is one that I trade all the time and I've been trading this one as the market has been extremely volatile and this is one that goes up in price when the markets are selling off and I traded this one this past week I believe I made 7% on one day I lost 2% on this one in another trade 
and I made back 1.8%, I believe, on one day, and then I made another like 2%, 3% this past Friday on TVIX. So I've been very active with this ETF. And you know, you guys have seen this in the group chat. You guys have seen this in all of my videos pretty much. I trade a bunch of the same ETFs and stocks because this is what works for me, right? And the fact that the market has been ridiculously volatile, it's been flying up 500 points one day in terms of the Dow, you know, going down 700 the next day and swinging all the way back up before the close of the market, you know, it's back to the break even. We've been seeing some insane volatility, which has led to a bunch of big moves for these ETFs. So the fact that we broke a critical support in the S&P and a critical support in the Dow Jones, you know, I still see some further red in the overall markets, right? And the fact that we're still in the trade war with China, there's a bunch of doubts in the market, there's a bunch of uncertainty in the market. I believe this volatility is going to continue for a couple of weeks, a couple of months until this trade war is settled. And if this is not settled, guys, you know, for another year or something, you know, we could be experiencing this volatility in the markets for some time to come. So judging off what happens pre-market hours tomorrow with the futures of the markets and what stocks are looking like pre-market hours, I'm either going to be trading TQQQ in a case that we do have a market bounce back, which I do think is possible since we broke below the support. We could potentially have a bounce back day, right? Or scenario number two, if we continue to sell off, which again, I think is very, very possible. You know, TVIX is going to be a spectacular play again. So from $53, guys, TVIX does have margin up to about $60, which does give it about a 5, 6, 7% potential for profit. But this is why, you know, I stress it very, very often in my videos and in pretty much every single video that you must, must, must do your pre-market analysis. You must understand what's going on with the futures pre-market hours, stocks, before you really, you know, dive into what you're going to be trading that day in terms of these market ETFs, right? Because if we see tomorrow that, you know, the Dow's down 150, 200 points pre-market hours, you know, that could be an indication that we might have a red day, right? And, you know, we've seen the Dow fall 800 points in a day in the past two weeks, right? So if we see that, guys, you know, that could give you the indication, okay, today might be a day to trade TVIX, right? But if we see large caps, green pre-market hours, let's say Apple is up, you know, a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, Facebook's up a little bit, you know, Google, Microsoft, they're all up pre-market hours and you know the markets are slowly pushing up right that could be an indication that we might have a bounce back day tomorrow we might have a couple of green days in a row or one green day right on a bounce back and that could be an indication to trade TQQQ right this is an ETF again that's going up in price when the markets are going up in price so TQQQ guys TVIX and you know SQQQ very very important to study these under understand what's going on pre-market hours with the overall markets to really see what you're going to be trading that day. So, you know, in terms of ETFs, guys, that's pretty much what I'm watching today, right? And, and you know, for this week, you know, very important, a bounce back play on potentially DGAS or UGAS. UWT, I'm most likely going to be trading this tomorrow, guys, because this is looking very good on a technical basis as of right now. And of course, things can change up till now, from now to pre-market hours tomorrow. We're going to have to play it by ear. But from what I saw in this video, it's looking very, very good. So let's talk about some other stocks that I might be potentially playing playing if the markets actually have a bounce back day tomorrow, which again is very possible. So Apple is actually one that I'm looking to trade potentially if we do have a bounce back day tomorrow. And let me tell you guys why. So what do we notice here on Apple? Every time, pretty much every time that it's taken a lower low, it's taken a new low in terms of these past couple of weeks, it's ended up bouncing back up and headed back up to that 50 S SMA, which is a very strong resistance. So the fact that we broke below here to make a new low, we haven't tested those 163 lows quite yet, but let's say we do end up breaking back down to the 160 range or maybe back down to 162, 163 you know, which is a very strong support, as we can see here from a couple months back, this could be a potential play from here, 163, back up to this 
uh, you know, 50 SMA resistance if the markets do end up bouncing back up, which is very possible because, again, we broke key support levels. We're pushing down. We could have another red day, but I do think we're going to end up having a couple of green days in a row to, you know, go back up to the top of that resistance because, again, let me, let me show you guys. You know, we could end up having a couple of green days to get back up to this range potentially, right, for the S&P and the Dow Jones maybe back up to this range, right? So if that does end up happening, these large caps like Apple, you know, Facebook, and Facebook's a different beast right now, guys. This one's actually, you know, trending above this 180 SMA. So on a technical perspective, Facebook's actually looking pretty good. So if we actually do end up holding here, we could end up playing Facebook up to 150, which offers a solid margin of about 4%. You know, that's pretty, pretty good. But again, swing trading has been very difficult for me at least because the markets have been extremely volatile and I've been focusing mostly on inverse ETFs and market ETFs due to the volatility in the market. So I don't want to hold you guys too long. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you're trading this week. What stocks are you watching? And if you stayed this long into the video, drop a comment. Let me know that you stayed and I truly, truly appreciate it. If you guys really stayed stick for the entire video. I truly appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. You guys really don't understand, but I hope you guys again, enjoyed the video, found some value in it. If you did drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe, follow me on the social platforms. If you want to stay with me, connected with me and the whole entire group on a day-to-day -day basis, join the discord, join the Facebook. I'll see you guys in there. Have a great rest of your weekend. Peace out.